vision that we would not settle for where we are at, uh, that we'll begin to think, hey, there is more land for us to conquer. There are institutions all around us. Uh, we need even to begin reaching out uh, to other neighborhoods, uh, that God may give us that vision, uh, that as individuals, uh, we may also begin to flow and allow the Lord to lead us, that we are not stopping at the 25th anniversary. We are moving out uh, to the domains and the direction uh, that God is leading us uh, into. Mobilize every member of the church to be engaged in reaching out. When Oliver Cromwell served as prime minister in England at some point, they were lacking silver. And he sent silver coins, he sent his emissaries to go and look for silver coins. And they came back to him and they said, sir, we could not get any silver at all. The only silver we could get were the statues of the saints which were in the churches. To which Oliver Cromwell responded and said, excellent. Melt the saints and put them into circulation. Melt the saints and put them into circulation. And it is possible that within our churches, and I do hope not in Sitam current. That we have certain saints that needs to be melted and put in circulation. So that they would begin to make an impact and bring changes for the glory and the honor of God. What is the strategy that God uses? Verse 6 and 7 and I close with this. The strategy that God uses is very, very simple. He says this. Then I will drive out from before the children of Israel... Only divide it by lot to Israel as an inheritance as I have commanded you. Here are the promises that God has given to them. And God says, go and possess the land. But God also says, actually, you're not the ones going to possess the land. I will drive your enemies before you. I will be the one going ahead of you. I will be the one bringing the changes, the transformation. You just need to come with me. I will be the one who will be bringing the victory to you. The victory belongs to the Lord. How many of us, while we are faced with situation, have gone through those moments when we have felt like we cannot go on anymore? How many of us have been faced with circumstances that have been so difficult for us and yet how great it is to turn our gaze not to our own qualifications, not to our own abilities, not to our own resources, not to our own strength, but to the resource of the living God who reigns and lives and be able to plug in into his power and allowing him to act accomplish his task through us and so God says I will do this to you there is more land to be conquered you are not going alone I'm going to accompany you to bring the changes I'm going to accompany you to bring the transformation I will work through you so that in the final end he the sovereign lord of all the earth will be the one who will receive all the praise all the glory all the honor for what has happened the living God who rules as and reigns as king eternal. Without this sense of unworthiness. One sometimes has the attitude. That God must be very lucky. To have him or her. As a servant. The thought that. The church. Indeed may be very privileged. To have you serve. In that ministry where you are serving. But when we put things in the right perspective. And see that it is God. We are humbled to the extent we come back to God and say, All the glory, all the honor belongs to you. And worthy servants, we have only done our duty as we allow the Lord to lead us on. It's hard to tell. I used to pray, I used to ask God if He would come and help me. Then I asked God if I could come and help him. Then I ended up by asking God to do his own work through me. It is not asking God, can I help you? It is just allowing God, God, do what needs to be done. To possess the land and the territories, to conquer this neighborhood for the glory of the living God.
We must allow God to take the preeminence in our lives. And for us to do that, we must allow him to be a partner in our lives. One who dwells in us. One who leads us. One who takes control. One whom we are surrendered to. One whom we acknowledge as Lord so that we are not the ones who are calling the shot. It is the Lord who is calling the shot because he's the one guiding us. We have yielded and totally surrendered ourselves to him. Then we can go out and conquer the territories. Let's bow down before the Father. Our Father and our God, we thank you. And we honor you that you use ordinary people. Who would have thought that 150 people coming to this church 25 years ago would see it become what it is today. We thank you. We bless you. We praise you. You use ordinary people. I pray for myself as I pray for my brothers and my sisters here. Some of us who may be very discouraged because of the circumstances which are around us. It may not be age-based. It may be health-based. It may be resource-based. It may be circumstances that are totally beyond us, Lord. And yet that in those very spheres we would submit and surrender ourselves to you and allow you to have the preeminence as Lord. So take the first place we thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. I would encourage anyone. Thank you very much. I would encourage anyone who has never made this decision to allow the Lord Jesus Christ to be your Lord and your Savior. That's where it begins. And when it's After you, oh, we're marching. 
managed to die, asked me to try to persuade him whether we could skip this so that he can rest a little bit. And you know our president works hard all the time to serve God, to serve the people of Kenya. So I was trying to ask him how. He'll arrive early in the morning and make it here. He needs to take a bit of rest so that we can preserve him for the people of Kenya. And he told me that uh, his relationship with his church is very deep. He has received <laughs> countless blessings from here in his earlier life and his family. And therefore, he wanted to be here in person. I was trying to persuade him that I could uh, present him. <laughs> and he said uh, his relationship with this church is personal and it cannot be delegated. <laughs> persuaded me to talk to him, they were suggesting probably I could try to bring my manager to talk to him. <laughs> and one of them told me not to dare. She is even more persuaded. Than the <laughs> so as we slept, the president traveled thousands of miles away and arrived in the country at 3.45 a.m. to be here with you. Hindsight, I think I was uh, wrong. Because if he is, once we have confirmed as he has, and the pastor as he has said, that his path to leadership in a big way started here, I am also a beneficiary of those blessings. Because, uh, once uh, he got his job, he mentored me from a first town member of parliament to deputy president. against the president and all of us. They are the ones who are doing fake opinion polls, giving us no chance whatsoever. If you read the media, you would have believed we will not get anywhere. They have been activated their back. Your Excellency, where you are away? Because of the various diplomatic successes that you have achieved since you ascended to the leadership. You went to the UN, you have to be, been to Egypt and mobilized Africa in matters of climate change. You have mobilized the development partners to assist us in mitigating the effects of climate change and the drought that is ravaging the country. You met the president of South Africa and made very serious progress in matters of migration. You have just come from South Korea where you have successfully mobilized millions of dollars to assist this great country. These people, where you are away, crafted a narrative that now that you are succeeding and the world has accepted you and accepted your leadership and they are responding to your various engagements, that William Ruto is a puppet of the West. We have told them, 
President William Ruto has exclusive mandate from the people of Kenya to engage the West, the East, the North, the South, and anybody who means well for this great country. So we want to ask the people of Kenya to ignore such. Your Excellency, when you are away, before you left, you instructed our Cabinet Secretary for Interior and your security chiefs to do whatever it takes to restore security across the country. And our hardworking CS and the security chiefs came up with a good strategy on how to create convergence between officers of the National Government Administration and the police to achieve total security. Again, our detractors using the press put a screaming headline, Moi era chiefs are back. That is how malicious these people are because they don't want to see anything that is good for this country. Your Excellency, we want to encourage you. We want to tell you, the people of Kenya are behind you. Please carry on with the good job you are doing, and we ask these Christians to continue praying for us. For the violence of doubt, the Ruto administration is solid. It is focused on service delivery and will not be distracted by propaganda, by inuedos, and things that do not make sense before the people of this country. Finally, Your Excellency, where you are away, the same people are asking the people of Kenya to go back to the streets because Parliament is doing its work and is an independent institution. The people of Kenyans are telling them if they want the people of Kenya to go to the streets, they must lead by example. Because these people who want our children to go to the streets have organized and arranged for their children to go and serve in the East African Legislative Assembly in Arusha. So we are asking them, if you want street protests, it is okay. But for them to take place, let your daughter come from Arusha, let your son come from Arusha, and physically lead the demonstrations, and the rest of Kenyans can follow. With those very many remarks, it is now my pleasure to ask you to put your hands together and help me to welcome the President of the Republic of Kenya, Dr. William Samoe Ruto. Asante sana. Good morning, Church. Or is it good afternoon? Good afternoon, Church. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Tafadhali tuketi. Um, kwanza mimi nataka nichukue nafasi hii ni mshukuru Mungu kwa kutupatia nafasi tufike hapa kanisani siku ya leo um, truly truly it's a homecoming whenever i come to this church it's a blessed moment and it's always reminds me of the many times we've come here with my family, the days you helped us raise our children in Sunday school, in the teens class, and we are truly grateful to Sitam Karen for being part of our family and helping us mentor our children. Asante Sana um, for welcoming us, for us, to celebrate with you this Silver Jubilee, 25 years of Sitam Karen. Um, we first came here to Sitam Karen in 2008, I think. And uh, when we moved to, to Karen, I think 2007, when, when we moved to... <laughs> eh? 19? Eh? Sorry, yeah, my wife is correcting me. I think I'm getting old or something. <laughs> Actually, it is 1997. <clears throat> 
so that's when we moved to Karen and we became part of this congregation. We truly trust God and bless this church for being part of our family. We have grown here. We have learned the word of God here. Many of our children have been brought up here. And when I received a letter from Bishop Odede, um, maybe my good deputy did not know, but it was not a letter of invitation. It was a letter of instructions. <laughs> and, and I seem not to have a choice because I read between uh, the letter and uh, there, was no, there, there was no space for me to escape. He just told me what the time is and when the day is <laughs> and, and how it should go. So I am truly happy to be here uh, this uh, morning and afternoon and to thank God for what he is doing not just in Sitam, but in, in our country. Um, let me just say two things. Um, first, let me thank the church for praying for our country. I say so from a, a position of information and knowledge. The last election was a difficult moment for all of us, but when I saw bishops in Bomas praying for every moment and every step of the way, holding vigil across the night so that Kenya can have a peaceful election, I have nothing but admiration for the church and for the men of God who came through so that we can have a peaceful election in Kenya. Thank you very much.